Hey guys, tonight's fish video is golden tilefish. This is the walleye of the North Atlantic. It's one of my favorite fishes in all of the oceans. Absolutely delicious, texturally just about perfect, um, and requiring an unusual amount of like restraint from me while cooking, which is something I don't usually do. So we're going to take this beautiful piece of fish. You can see, even with the salt, its distinctive yellow golden markings. You can get gray tile fish as well. It is also a tasty fish. It is not as texturally pleasing, in my opinion, as is its golden compatriot. Now, uh, a little salt on the filet, and then I'm just gonna toss it in a little bit of starch. This is uh, a whole wheat flour I get from one of my farms downstate, uh, uh, Doug Rinkenberger at Garden Gate Farms. Um, this is just going to help make sure the skin crisps and is brown and sweet. Um, and then we're just going to quickly saute some shallots, some mushrooms, and some cabbage as a side. And I've got a Berblanc sauce that I'll explain to you as I'm doing everything else here. Uh, so uh, let's go ahead and head over to the stove. All right, so I'm at the stove. I've got two big fat cast irons, one over pretty high heat for the vegetables, one over medium heat for the fish. A drop of oil to start both of these things. We'll touch them out with a little butter later. So here is our piece of golden tile fish. You can see it's nice and evenly coated in that uh, whole wheat flour. So we're gonna lay this down into the oil away from ourselves. This fit, the wheat flour is ground really rough, so it's gonna act a little bit like a cornmeal crust, get uh, kind of toasty and sweet. And I've just got my hand holding the fish down for right now because I'm trying to keep it, keep the skin from curling up, and lifting the middle off the pan so that I get a nice, even, flat, brown, crispy surface on the skin. So you just have to hold it still 35, 40 seconds, um, or until you start burning yourself, which is usually how I measure whether or not I've held it for long. All right, so the fish has been uh, held flat until it will stay flat. And now I've got this next fat cast iron pan that is smoking hot. I'm going to drop a handful of shallots into it and a handful of mushrooms. With any luck, we'll get a tiny little bit of color on the mushrooms and shallots. And then we'll drop the cabbage in and just give it a quick turnover with a little bit of butter so it's just wilted, but still has a little bit of texture. Um, the sauce for tonight's meal is hiding up here in my extraordinarily technologically advanced sauce storage device. It's a measuring cup with a ladle. Um, this is a Fer Blanc. This is made with champagne, but you can make it with any white wine or red wine. You can make it with whiskey, all kinds of stuff. You take an appreciable amount of the alcoholic beverage of choice uh, and reduce it with spices until it's basically dry, offset in French. Then you take a splash of cream, drop it on top of there, and reduce that until it's kind of snot textured. The cream is a bit of a cheat to help the butter stay together when you're making the actual sauce. Because once you've got your reduction made, you start to slowly and gently parcel cold tabs of butter into it. And, you know, for example, this, what, a cup and a half of sauce is probably a cup and a quarter of butter. It's the main body of the sauce is butter, and you're just using the wine reduction or the beer reduction or whatever as the flavor and the acid to make the sauce like tart tart enough to be enjoyable. So, oh, just as expected, we've got a little bit of color going on there. That's good news. Get a little dab of salt. Big handful of just shredded white cabbage. You can use Savoy cabbage, you can use Napa cabbage, whatever you like, any fun thing that's close to hand. And then a couple of tabs of butter for it to steam down with. And we'll turn that all over a little bit. And then just cover it, let it steam for a few minutes. Fish is looking just about ready for Freddy. You can tell it's ready to turn. It will either slide around the pan easily, see how easily that released, or you can see that it's cooked about three quarters of the way up really close in there. So let's go ahead and, oh, that cutesy poo little fish guy. 
And I'm going to throw a couple tabs of butter at this too, just to give it a little extra fat and a little extra steam to finish cooking through. Remember, you do not have to eat all of this butter that you put in the pan. You only have to eat as much as you like, which is probably still all of it. <laughs> and I'm just letting the butter melt and uh, really stand up on the fish and help it cook through. This will also help to cook the uh, whatever starch you use on the outside of the bottom so that it uh, crisps up nicely and evenly. This, this also helps, the starch also helps the sauce to stick to the fish so it's got, it holds the sauce well, which allows the acidity of the Bourbonc or the Bel Rouge or whatever sauce you're making in this style. It helps the acid and all the other things that are in that sauce to cling to the fish so you get a better seasoned piece of fish. I just cut the heat on the vegetables because I'm willing to bet if I open that top right now, the uh, cabbage is steamed and starting to wilt a little. So, yeah. My hunch is, after a few years of cooking, getting pretty good. So the cabbage is still about half raw, but it's wilting and steaming down a little bit. So that's about as far as that needs to go. It's just seasoning and plating at this point, which is, you know, academic. All right, our fish is done. Let's see, let's set it down on a little diaper here and let some of the fat drain off. But you see, nice and crispy, crusty uh, exterior. Got our sauteed and seasoned cabbage and our extremely technologically advanced sauce container. Sauce container. Still just a measuring cup with a label. So for plating this, I like to make sure that everything gets a little sauce to it by laying the sauce down first. So this, for blancs are very um, temperature sensitive. If you try to keep them too hot, they'll, it'll break. So you just want to put it in a warm spot in the middle of your stove or somewhere where it'll keep, you know, just above blood temperature really. It's about perfect for these. So I'm just going to drop an ounce or so in the middle of the plate and just let it kind of spread out. The plate could have been warmer, it would have spread right to the edges, but you know, you can't win them all. Then I'm going to take a healthy spoonful of this mushroom cabbage butter shallot mixture. Kind of lay it up just off center. Yeah. I'll take this little bit of fish. This is very hot, so use a spatula if you don't have asbestos for paws. And just stand it up so that it is dead center middle focus. Now, you can, for finer points of plating, chop a little parsley or you know a little basil pouches or something of that stripe to make it cuter. But I'm hungry, so we're gonna eat this fish. I will take a picture right. of myself trying to eat it. Here it is. You can see, as soon as I cut into it, that the fish is perfectly cooked just through. It's not dry in any way. It's just barely pulling apart. So let me get this little doer of cabbage and sauce with fish. Kind of build my perfect bite here. Absolutely salivating. 